So we're going to kick off with Tuesday's Times. Josh, what are they leading with? Well, they have a... First of all, they've got a nice picture. I don't really know much about football, but they've got a picture. There's a, there's a big England match coming up, so they've got some, some of the wags on the front there. Which That's is nice. Sweet That's good, yeah. ..of them. And, uh, but the big story is EU rejects New Deal for return of migrants. What are the EU doing now, Josh? OK, basically, they had had a meeting, the government, and what they wanted to say was anybody who'd claimed asylum within a European country before coming over to yes. the UK, they be, we should be able to send them back. Right. And, essentially, the EU are saying no, but it seems like it's like a rejection. But, actually, the real issue is that there are internal issues within the EU where they're already having problems internally because... They're trying to sort... They, they can't make a deal with us until they've sort out their own thing, and it's all about spreading the pain. So it's not a curmudgeon kind of thing because no. we left. Even though we'd like to think that. Like, we could go, yeah, yeah, oh, they're being... You know, but actually, the reality is they're not in a position to negotiate because they can't even sort their own... Is that true, Leo? Do you think they could... They, they're in no position to help? Uh, well, the, the EU are having uh, lots of pushback from all their member states because they've got this thing where uh, each, each state in the EU has to take 30,000 migrants and uh, if they don't, they've got to pay £20,000 each, which actually, considering the cost, <laughs> <That's> cheap, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it seems like an incredible like bargain, bargain yeah? for us. I mean, I, I wish we could, uh, we could get into, into that deal. But, uh, I mean, there's, there's huge pushback from, from countries like Hungary, yes. uh, which, uh, you know, they've, they've decided to keep their, their culture and everything, uh, you know, and preserve it instead of just open it up to, to this. And the, I mean, the, at the moment, EU, uh, EU politicians, like politicians across, across the West, they don't, they don't seem to see themselves as politicians of countries. They're politicians of economies. So if it's good for the economy, if you can bring in low-skilled workers, they see it as good. When it comes to the small boats crisis, though, isn't this really a, a matter between England and France or the UK and France rather than bringing the EU into it? Because according to this article, Macron is saying uh, he's repeatedly re rejected a bilateral returns agreement. He insists Britain must address the issue at EU level. Okay. He's almost saying, look, just go to, go to Dad. No, he's, he's go absolutely passing the buck. Yeah, but yeah. Of course he doesn't deal with it. Now, we do have our own individual deals with France. We're going to be talking about one of those stories later. Yeah. But, yeah, this is absolutely him just being like, no, no, I don't want to deal it's with It's always been a bit like that, yeah. a bit trucking. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the, and the problem starts at the EU's borders. I mean, it starts further back than that, but, I mean, if the EU could control, uh, you know, exercise more control uh, when people come into the EU, then, you know, and, and slow them down as they come across. Is there anything else on the front cover of The Times that we should be talking about? Yes. Top universities give more clearing spaces to foreign students. So, look, we kind of dealt with the story about a month or two ago. Yeah. Uh, that there are less spaces now for British students. Now we've got clearing because of uh, A-level results coming out and whatnot. And it's actually the discrepancy of spaces in, like, in certain universities, like University of Glasgow, there are four courses for, available for British school leavers, yes. whereas they have 655 <laughs> international students. Yeah, but that, this is about money. Of right? course I mean, it, the, the, the International <laughs> yeah. students pay more. They pay, I think, triple the amount. They do, and the universities are desperate for money. They're always scrabbling for money. And also students should love this, because they're the most sort of woke sort of, hey, yeah, we should have open borders. Yeah. It's like, yeah, all right, we'll have open, open borders, and you can't go to university because they should them. reject yeah. university places and say, no, I demand you give them to a foreign <laughs> yeah. student. Yeah. I've got no choice, because this is a double whammy, because, of course, this is the first first year where they're actually having to work for their grades. No, this yeah. is, you know, you're being flippant, but it's true. But, I mean, this year, because the t teachers were marking their own A-level students' grades during the pandemic, and so they overly inflated it, and all these people got amazing results and got to go to the universities they wanted to. And now, because, you know, they're being marked properly, one in five uh, are not going to get their first choice. Yeah. So you've got this joint thing of there's very few places because they're all going to the foreign students. At the same time, fewer people are getting the places they want. Yeah. yeah. Bit of a mess. Yeah. yeah. Un university's rubbish anyway, though. So. Yeah, don't bother. Yeah. Apprenticeships all the way. All right. Mm. I wish I'd have done that. Anyway, we're going to move <laughs> I on. I can't imagine. What, I would have done, I what would apprenticeship great, would you have done? I would have been a great... <laughs> wood, woodwork. Wood, wood, carpenter. Yeah. yeah I can see you. Good enough for Jesus. <laughs> OK. I wouldn't know. We're going to go on to uh, <laughs> the mail.